Good morning. Here we are. You poo. Funny day. You poo and you piglet. <laughs> oh, That's you not funny. very reverent. <laughs> no, it's a funny day. I, I often think during Holy Week, so... What was Jesus thinking about? Or what were the disciples thinking? Like, like last night, nobody got any sleep. Mm -hmm. After the arrest in the garden, some followed Jesus from trial to trial, Peter and John and I don't know who else, to the trial at Annas, the high priest's house, to the trial at Caiaphas, the other high priest, because they were taking turns being high priest, his father-in-law, Caiaphas' house on the west western hill, and then wherever the Sanhedrin meant, once the sun came up, they quick have a trial before the Sanhedrin. Probably, what, at the temple? And then, and then to the fortress Antonia uh, for Pontius Pilate. And, and that was, that would have been, probably by this point, they would have been done and sending him off over to uh, Herod. Back across town again. I wonder where all of them are. Those that weren't following Jesus were probably pacing up and down someplace, arguing with each other, coming up with plans. We should do this, we should do that. Who knows? What a day. And none of them really understood what Jesus was doing. They all thought that it was out of his control. Oh no, the Romans are doing this, and the and the uh, the, the uh, high priest, the Jewish authorities are doing this. But it was Jesus who was doing things. Yep. We're gonna sing hymn number four hundred fifty-three. It's seven <laughs> verses, <clears throat> but I think we should sing them all. Um, they're kind of slow, which is. Uh, Good to give you opportunity to think. Number 453, Upon the Cross Extended. Your head with thorns around. 
cross for me enduring, the crown for me securing. You healed my wounds and set me free. Your cords of love, my Savior, bind me to you forever. I am no longer mine. To you I gladly tender all that my life can render, and all I have to you resign. Your cross I place before me, its saving power restore me, sustain me in the past, it will when life is ending, be guiding and attending, my way to your Matthew 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. <laughs> but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. So we have this puzzling spot that we're reading through Matthew, and instead of following the Holy Week story, uh, we're gonna we didn't want to jump to the end of Matthew and then come back. But you know the gospel is the same gospel all through, whether it's at the cross or someplace else. Jesus, here in the Sermon on the Mount, which is pictured as this really profound, really uh, inspiring, uh, you know, the loving Jesus kind of thing, yet the, the Sermon on the Mount is really heavy law. It's a it's the weight the burden of the law in this sermon. It's it's heavy here. It will get heavier yet unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. You'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. None of the law. I'm not making any exceptions in the law. I'm gonna full, I'm gonna uh, the law is going to be enforced in its full force. Jesus says. But you can't keep it. The, the scribes and the Pharisees are very righteous people. They're doing all kinds of right things. It's not fake. I'm some there are hypocrites, some who who uh, don't practice what they preach. But by and large, I don't think that was the case. They called one another out, and when whenever that was happening, no, they were obeying. Uh, moment by moment, the best that they could. 
and they weren't good enough. And so these people who are listening, who look at the scribes and Pharisees as clean people, I have to be cleaner than them. I have to be better than than the pastor, right? This I this is one of those things I hated about the ministry, when people would come to you. Well, as as a pastor, you of course, and you know, fill in the blank. You really talk to God, or or you're really close to God, or or you wouldn't have problems with this or that sin. Not like me. <laughs> no. These people, Jesus says, you have to be better than your religious teachers. You have to be better than the best person you ever saw. And you cannot be. You have to fulfill the last letter of the law. But he says, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. I don't think anybody, I don't suppose there was anybody listening to him that day who heard what that meant. They might have thought that if Jesus is going to fulfill the law, he's going to be really good. And there are many people who follow Jesus that way today. That Jesus did everything right. And if we want to follow Jesus, we also have to do everything right. We have to be like Jesus and do what Jesus did. But you can't do that any more than you can can exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees to enter the kingdom of God. No, fulfilling the law is what Jesus did on this day, Good Friday. What Jesus is talking about here is what would happen all those chapters later when Jesus is taken before the law and tried again and again, tried by Annas and tried by Caiaphas and tried by the Sanhedrin and tried by Pontius Pilate and tried by King Herod and tried by Pilate again and tried really by the crowd and the people all judge him guilty. They all put on him their guilt. That's what we just sang about. I caused your grief and sighing by evils multiplying. And Jesus fulfilled the law. The requirements of the law that there must be a sacrifice made. A sacrifice that would be sufficient to pay for all sin. I hope that you are spending this day in thought. I know as as a pastor, it was hard too. You're busy with all these other things and you have to prepare for this and prepare for that. And Easter sermon's not ready yet and and Good Friday, I hope, is in the bag and ready to be preached. But I hope that you can take today and just live through it thinking about what Jesus did. It's worth spending that time that he remembered you as he as he was tried taken from place to place he thought of you as he was crucified and he forgave you with his last breaths lord jesus let us spend a day with you Fill us with your Holy Spirit today. Remember us. Lord, you came into your kingdom. Now, Lord, grant that we may remember you. Help us in all things to remember you. To call to mind again and again all that you have taught and done especially all that you did for us on this day. And remembering you, Lord, grant that we may have victory today over our enemy, Satan. 
over our own flesh, over the past and the present and the future. Let us walk with you today and celebrate with you on Sunday. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.